City of Stevens Point Historic Preservation Design Review Commission Meeting, recorded September 20, 2021. Thank you for your patience and I guess if there's anybody who's going to be watching this afterwards but so since we do have a quorum chair if you want to go ahead right. with roll call correct uh Siebert here Nicole here uh DeBush here Scripps is excused uh Malefsky is excused and Monk is excused so we have quorum okay uh, report on the July 28th 2021 meeting are there any questions corrections was that the last meeting we had? Yes. Um, I, I would um, just like it noted that um, I actually was excused. I, I have a job that sometimes I have to work at the last minute late, and I notified Adam as soon as I knew that. So I appreciate that. Thanks. Yeah, we could definitely amend that. OK. Uh, any other? Okay, a motion to accept, please, with the uh, change from Ms. Mackle. Thank you. Uh, second? Second. Second. In favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Passed. Uh, yeah, Miss. Okay. Number three, a request by Joe Staczynski, representing Northside Yard LLC, for demolition review to raise the principal structure at the property of 1000 Union Street. Uh, we toured the place this morning. Uh, are there any questions for the gentleman? Further questions or comments about it? Uh, last time we talked about the fact that we might want to put it up for moving, just delay the raising of it to put it up for somebody might want to move it. Uh, do we want to pursue that? Or what are your options? Ms. Mackle, Mr. DeBush? Um, I guess I was, we assume I assume that you wouldn't know what the developer would do uh, if we said you can't demolish this. Name and position. Uh, Reese Frederick, uh, field engineer for Market and Johnson. I'm not sure if Joy Hanneman's on the call right now. No? Okay. Um, I'm not I'm not sure what she's gonna do with it what they have planned. I can only speculate Yeah, well one option we could do is uh, You know should the Commission want to approve of the Demolition review is to add a condition saying that you know the applicant to the greatest extent possible should see if the structure can be salvaged. If so, then pursue the options as uh, deemed appropriate. If not, then proceed with the raising of the structure. You know, that would be one option as a potential commission should the- Okay, should I'm you. sorry, I, my hearing aids are uh, broken, so I, I'm having a hard time. Yeah, one option is, you know, pr you know, should the commission choose to approve the uh, demolition review mm -hmm. to approve of it, but with the condition saying, essentially that the applicant should uh, determine to the best of their ability if they can salvage the you know relocate the structure okay. if not you know if conditions such as there being a financial hardship or just structurally yeah. as we talked about that that wouldn't be doable then um, upon confirmation with um, myself um, go ahead with the raising permit so essentially doing a little bit of research on their end to see is it possible before going forward? Now that's one option. If if the if it's a consensus that you would want to keep the structure, and if not, then I um I'm really and I didn't go inside because I just <laughs> didn't. But um, it seems like making it seems like may, that would make the owner do a lot of research that, or pretend to do a lot of research, when to me it seems like a foregone conclusion that they're not gonna be able to find a place to move it. Do you know what I'm saying? It, it, it seems sort of like, I, 
I don't know. I, unless somebody can get, convince me differently, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm, I don't think the value of the, the house or the history is worth saving it. And I think, I'm, I think Tim disagrees with me. <laughs> um, and I'm usually, you know, yay history, yay old houses, but I don't know. From everything I've read in this report, it, 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 I'm not sure it's worth spending much money on. And I don't know exactly who would spend that money. I think, to me, it's a foregone conclusion that moving the house, which would involve, I think, fixing those burnt beams and everything, would, would be a financial hardship. I, so, I don't know, it seems like window dressing to ask the owner to, to explore moving before demolishing. That's just my opinion. And maybe just a little bit further on the you know, financial hardship component of it. You know, that is stated throughout the demolition guidelines, likewise the design guidelines as well, essentially stating, you know, if the applicant can prove that it's a financial hardship to do X, Y, or Z, you know, mm -hmm. that's justification for oh, yeah. proceeding uh, an alternative route or the route that's yeah. uh, intended all along. So, um, you know, that's one option if amongst the three of you if you I think this would be or would would have been a uh, you know a perfect case for uh, demolition by neglect I mean uh, um, because it was let go and if it had been caught sooner it, it might have been I, I guess I agree with Mary I think it's pretty much a foregone conclusion too but on the other hand, um, you know, this, this development has months before it's even close to being completed. And to tear down a building, it'll take you know, a couple of days and to, to cover it up with dirt or whatever. Um, and in, there's no decision on what they're gonna do with that space anyway. Um, it would have to come before this committee, it sounds like, if, to, to if do the, something with that space. And I'd certainly be really, reticent to make more parking lots. Um, so I think in some respects, I, 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 I agree, I don't think anything's gonna come of it, but on the other hand, there's certainly time to, to take a shot and see if, there's, uh, if there is any interest out there. I think there might be interest if the building could stay there and somebody could get it for free and renovate it. But to move it and then to do the renovations necessary, I think that's pretty unlikely, given what I saw. You wouldn't have any idea whether that's possible, would you? What, what's to that? leave the building as is, where it is? Um, I have no idea. That would be an owner question. Because, it, you know, moving is expensive, wires and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But to leave it there and to marry new beams to the, the burned ones, that sort of thing, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> that might be a possibility. A new roof, of course. And one thing I would state more from a zoning code standpoint, so that is a uh, non-compliant structure in terms of current zoning code standards for that district. So if any... So just using a hypothetical, if any rehabilitation work would require, say for example, tearing down the attached garage and building something new, uh, staff, I would not be able to approve that given that that would be an expansion of an already existing non-conforming structure. So you know, at least from a zoning code standpoint, I know this is a little different from a historic standpoint, but that would pose significant challenges if anything structural if the footprint would have to be altered in any way shape or form plus meeting applicable building code requirements could be highly difficult just given the age of the structure over uh, 120 years old i i suppose and this is just a little personal example i had somebody had given me an old kitchen cabinet unit um, and it was in my garage, and I thought I was going to be able to use it in my store, and it, it was just a mess. So it's just been sitting in my garage uselessly. And um, I had two people come in this weekend and 
rave over it. Oh my gosh. And I, I actually gave it to one of those people. And it, it looked to me, and I could have sold it to the other, but anyhow. Um, it looked, I mean, it was just a piece of junk to me. And, you know, it's, it's possible that somebody would look at that house and say, yeah, I want to do it over. I got the money to move it. Uh, you never know. I, I don't know how that, I don't know how that thing happens, but if we've got time, as Joe says, you know, maybe, maybe somebody would want to fix it up. How, what the process, I guess, is my question. Who would make it known that this is available to move? Would it be the owner or you guys or? It'd be, it'd be the owner. They, we're just kind of representing them. It's, we're just trying to get an answer from you guys, that's all. I don't know what you think. Yeah, Me I, yeah I don't know. I, it wouldn't be yeah. us. Mm -hmm. I well, think a challenge, in my opinion, is that you know, from a time standpoint, that you know, there'd be a lot of steps that would have to fall into place. Should, even from a structural standpoint, if the building can be moved and rehabilitated to uh, a habitable structure, that you know. It could be a matter of time where it could be a length of time that you know arguably could pose a hardship as well. You know how long will it take to reach out to potential buyers? You know, would they be keen to even utilize a structure given the significant costs that likely would have to uh, that they would have to incur to bring it up to code? Um, finding a suitable location to um, locate the structure that you know financial. I think would be, you know, I don't want to speak for the applicant, but would be a significant deterrent, but, you know, time would be another thing as well, and another deterrent. I, um, I also think, you know, if it, if it were, you know, a uniquely structured house or, or, you know, had something sort of special about it other than being old, it might be more likely, but honestly, it, it just doesn't stand out to me as, and again, I'm, I'm really interested in history and preserving history, and I guess this is ordinary history, but it, it just doesn't seem like people would be aching to renovate it. it I, to me, it lacks charm and, and interest, but... And I will say that is one of the guidelines for issuing a demolition review is, or approving rather a demolition review is essentially making sure, you know, not only is the structure by itself historic, but does it complement, does it, um, does it complement the broader neighborhood? So in this case, you know, the houses within the design review district on the north side, you know, does it complement, um, the overall neighborhood. You know, that's one of the, uh, like I said, that's one of the standards of review, and at least for staff's opinion, you know, yes, it is roughly 15, 20 years older than the other uh, structures nearby, both in and outside of the design review district. The fact that, as you mentioned, it's more of a simplistic design that doesn't, at least in staff's opinion, stand out relative to other structure or other houses say along Wisconsin Street or um, nearby in the design. I would argue that that's what makes it important. <laughs> that it's just, a, that an example of the yeah, <clears throat> common never the common yeah. Yeah. I would argue that's what makes it important. Mm -hmm. Although if you're going to move it that kind of no. destroys that <clears throat> aspect because you're going to move it to I don't know what Park Ridge or something and, you know. <laughs> sure. uh, but to leave it where it is because it is ordinary um, right, that would make more sense. Um, I guess that's, uh, I don't know. I can't make a motion, so I guess that, that's my opinion. Leave it where it is, rebuild it where it is if somebody's interested. But as you say, the zoning, but that would take all sorts of things yeah. to jump through. And that would, yeah, that would be a very significant challenge that I could see as, you know, depending on the type of uh, 
work that need, would need to be done to the structure that would in any way, shape, or form involve me as zoning administrator taking a look at it to uh, approve any setbacks or height or whatever that they would uh, propose given the fact that it's already a legal non-conforming structure any alterations I wouldn't be able to approve unless they would meet the current standards as of today which as I said would be a I guess my other question is do we really need another parking lot well, I mean, that's, so, come on. that's and, a whole other thing. And, <laughs> yeah, and I will say, you know, that's not finalized. You know, the exact type of improvement, if any, hasn't been finalized for the lot, but uh, for the property. But like I said, if there are any improvements, that's something that for sure would have to go before yeah. this body. So, that, but to tear down an important building, to build a new building, I mean, we've done that time and time again. We've got that beautiful mm -hmm. post office. We've got that you know, where the bank was, the Masonic Lodge, all of that. So we're going to tear this down, either build a parking lot or some other structure. Just, that's irritating. <laughs> yeah, and that's something that, you know, I guess I would want to try to make that distinction from, you know, any type of improvement, if any, that would be brought, that would be part of a design review versus this, which would be strictly the potential demolition of the structure. So... So <clears throat> if we kind of threw it back to the developer to um, demonstrate um, an inability to, to either sell or move or renovate within a period of time, is that kind of something can we, I guess I'm looking at how do we frame that if we were to do that. And it's got to be a serious effort. You can't just, yeah, it's up there, you know, and do nothing. Yeah, they would have to demonstrate, I don't know, what they've done. Mm -hmm. um, advertise it, put up a big sign, I don't know. As far as rehabilitating the structure or? Um, yeah, see the real. Could they theoretically resell it as is to a private party? The structure? Could they just unload it on somebody else? That somebody I, else is buying, willing to buy it for Totally. I mean, they own that. They own it. So, yeah, they can do whatever they want with it. I, what time is it? Is it 11? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to try calling her once. <clears throat> In the meantime, is there any other comments or questions? Or I'll just have you walk away from that. I guess, you know, I know we, oh, I'm sorry. I don't know. I guess I'm, I'm struggling with a wording, but. Um, Mostly because I think that there's that time is not urgent. That there's it seems like nothing to lose to um, give it a shot. Hmm? Give it a shot. Give it a shot to um, request that the developer make a concerted effort to uh, to sell for. Uh, and again, if he sells it there, as is, whoever buys it is going to have to deal, come right back to, to us again, right, mm -hmm. to deal with it, or to zoning or whatever. Um, but to make an effort to resell or to resell with the possibility of moving. So I guess maybe just for clarification, when you're... Uh, the reselling component that would be strictly if they somebody could purchase the house but have it relocated mm -hmm. elsewhere that you know that it wouldn't involve uh, the sale of the house to keep it where it's currently he's saying is. both well both. Both. I mean if the developer says okay fine they can have that corner 
you know, we'll put up some screening, or whatever. Um, I mean, that's their choice, really, isn't it? And ultimately, I guess I would leave it up to you as far as what your intentions are, uh, your group's intentions are with the lot to see if that's mm -hmm. even doable or not. Right. Yep. So you want to make that into a motion? Hmm? Do you want to make that into a motion? Um, okay, so I, I move that the, uh, I, I don't know if we want to give them a set period of time. Um, say we give, we request that the developer make a concerted effort for, uh, to uh, either sell or sell with the intention of moving to uh, an alternative location, uh, this house, and um, return to uh, the committee um, in two months. Maybe just for uh, clarification, would it be for to the entire committee or just for, or they can approach, say, myself and um, chair with their findings, myself and or chair, and then okay. go from you there? Okay, I'm, I'm fine if they could just, just approach okay. uh, your office, yeah. So would that be approved but with bad condition? as you mentioned it, or just for clarification purposes? Um, approved without condition in terms of... Um, uh, would it be approved with the condition that, you know, as you mentioned, that the applicant takes a look to see, you know, is it possible to relocate the structure uh, elsewhere and then report their findings back to uh, myself within the yes, next I'm, number I'm of time. with reporting back to, to you. With their findings and then yeah. go from there. Yeah. Or the, the other condition was to buy it on site for a buck or whatever it happens to be uh, in order to rehab it at, on site. That's the other part of your motion, correct? What's that? that to, to on site, to buy it on site, rehab it on site. Yeah. Or move it. Right. I think that's my understanding of his motion. Okay, just just for just for clarification. So, so it it seems like we're actually adding another criterion under the guidelines of review for demolition. I mean, in this in this case, which because I don't I see that it meets all the guidelines for demolition according to the staff report. But we're actually then adding, well, no, it shouldn't be demolished if somebody will buy it and move it. So I, I guess I'm and I think maybe questioning the, the guidelines. I mean, maybe we should add a guideline that first you've got to check to see if somebody wants to move it, buy it. Or, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, well... At least for adding an additional design guideline, I mean that would yeah that would be done elsewhere in another meeting. Oh, I so know I think, that, but yeah, I think this this brings up that question of how are these guidelines. Yeah, I think you know, in my opinion, looking at the guidelines, you know, at least that condition that you mentioned would kind of fall within uh, the fourth uh, design or demolition guideline. So whether okay. the building or structure is, is of such old, unusual, or uncommon design, texture, and or material, uh, the key phrase would be then that it could be re reproduced only with great difficulty and or expense. So essentially determining is there a financial hardship for um, having somebody um, util rehabilitate the structure, or move it elsewhere, if the applicant would determine that there is great expense then of course then we'd proceed forward with um, issuing the raise permit and if not I mean then we'll work one-on-one um, -on -one with that okay. well, we do have a motion on the floor from Mr. DeBush a second. can you please repeat that loudly for my poor ears I'm sorry I have a hard time hearing through masks uh, repeat it 
uh, oh, okay. if, if I can. So, and I and I will say too. I mean, just looking at the guidelines as it's currently stated, it would have to be a you know what's brought before you right now. Uh, the demolition review with the conditions added. Um, then you get a. Uh, raising permit prior to that that would have to be the strict up or down yes or no on it um, so if you would vote to either that or postpone so I guess uh, that would be um, the path to proceed forward is either to vote yes or no on the motion or the recommendation that's included in the report to approve the request to raise okay. with those two conditions that your applicable building zoning code requirements be met and then the raising permit obtained. You mean do that first and then his motion? Um, that would be the only, just since they're adding another condition, that would require, I mean, uh, no. it, would ha it would have to be, uh, the motion would have to be, the recommendation on that motion would have to be what's presented in the packet, right. mm -hmm. essentially. So I'm moving to vote no on the demolition. That's his motion. C correct. And then if you would want to have uh, um, additional an additional condition, then uh, proceed forward with that route. So two motions in effect. Essentially. You would, the first motion would be what's stated in the packet, yes or no, and then with those conditions outlined, and then... Um, <coughs> So I, I'll move to, to uh, denying it, uh, demolition at this time. A second? I, I'm not going to second. Pardon? No, not me. I, can I? I really don't know. Can I? Second? Yeah, okay, I'll second. So could you, I'm sorry, I, I'm waiting on new hearing aids. Could, could I hear that motion again? To say, to vote no on the recommendation to raise. Okay. With the two conditions stated verbatim, um, it would be on cha page uh, six of the packet. Okay. Okay. Okay? Yeah. All right. All those in favor, aye. 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 All Nay. those opposed? Nay. I mean, me. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. It's a double negative, so it's confusing. Okay. Then you want to go forward with your other. Okay, so then I move that the uh, uh, contractor make a um, good faith effort to um, uh, either uh, sell uh, the property to um, for a possible renovation on site or um, and an alternative location to which the house is moved. I would, you know, my recommendation would be to uh, eliminate the sale of the property component because I think that would be more outside of this commission's purview. That this commission wouldn't be able to tell, you know, essentially tell a private owner, yes, you know sell the property but that would be outside so you know i would rec recommend eliminating that just because that would fall into some gray area Explore. basically see if at least from what i'm understanding your condition to see if um, determine have the applicant determine if uh, whether or not a financial hardship exists to rehabilitate the structure as is um, if the applicant determines that a financial hardship does exist, then uh, proceed forward with the raising permit. And if not, then you know, have the applicant work with staff accordingly. I don't know if that's, that's kind of how I, okay. but I just want to understood it, but I just want to make sure that we're all under the same, on the same page. Because essentially the, I just want to make sure that the condition that you're referencing aligns with one of the demolition guidelines exactly since those 
I think six, eight guidelines are the crux of how this commission has to review a request. So I just want to make sure that if any additional conditions are added, that it aligns with any one of those review standards. Which, at least from a financial hardship, at least my opinion, it would fall under the uh, review guideline number four that, you know, by rehabilitating the structure, does it pose great difficulty and or expense on behalf of the applicant? Um, if the applicant can prove that uh, it does, then um, report their findings back to staff for... Now, when you say applicant, you're talking about them um, or you're talking about somebody that might want it? Them, uh, Mark and Johnson, yep. There she is. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> Where's the ambulance? You know, if that, that's what I would recommend if you're looking at having a condition placed is to have it within the scope of any one of those six, eight review standards for uh, reviewing a demolition guideline, uh, demolition review request. <clears throat> Can you explain how... Uh, economic hardship is determined mm -hmm. is, so is potential benefit okay. a part of that equation that would, that would yeah so potential what benefit, gain, benefit. potential oh. gain okay yeah so essentially the question is how do you determine whether or not an economic hardship exists and you know naturally there are more than one route more than one way to do so you know one uh, one way that sticks out to me off the bat is determining the value of the structure as is relative to the cost that it would be needed the costs needed to rehabilitate the structure to bring it up to um, appropriate occupancy requirements um, if that whatever cost that is meets say for example the uh, raising threshold as mandated by the state then you know I think that would be a good or that would be a reasonable argument to make that you know does the cost of rehabilitating the structure exceed 50 percent of the assessed value for the house uh, if it does at least in my opinion that would be uh, reasonable uh, reasonable evidence that a financial hardship to exist that the cost of bringing up the code, uh, bringing up the structure to code, would be arguably more than what the house is worth currently. Can I uh, put the owner on speaker? Is sure. That okay? uh, just as long as they state their name and affiliation. Okay. Okay, Joe. I'm going to put you on speaker, and they they request that you say your name and your affiliation and title. Um, so here you go. This is Joy Hahnemann with Merge Urban Development Group. My address is 1228 Brunette Downs Drive, Madison, Wisconsin, 53718. Uh, I am an owner in the in the ownership group of Northside Yard LLC. And we um, purchased 1000 Union Street um, back in 2019 with the intention of folding it into the greater development plan of the North Side Yard development. Um, there are additional parcels on that site, particularly the, the dry cleaner that we have been in discussions with in order to work those two two parcels into our um, our development plan um, for the future phases at our side yard thanks Troy I don't know if I got any questions
maybe just to recap, so there is not a motion, or at least a motion currently on the table, so the next step would be um, stating the motion. Stating a motion, yeah. Now that we've said no to this, now we've got to have something to. Yeah, well, I'm rethinking that because... <laughs> Um, well, you can make a motion to withdraw your previous one. Um, you know, I think that's what I'm going to do because when I consider the costs, um, you know, from my abstract mind, I can say, well, if they can unload this, you know, there's no cost to them necessarily. But that's not what we're able to ask them. We're able to ask look at the, uh, the potential costs of, of bringing this, as you say, bringing this up to code. And so then they're including costs, they, you know, whatever they use, whatever they purchase this for, putting in a, a heck of a lot of money to bring this up to code. And at that point, would they get, would it be, um, financially viable. Uh, I don't know at that kind of, I mean, so I guess if we, uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm re kind of, I'm doubting that's likely to happen. Um, so I, I guess I'm gonna make a motion to withdraw my previous motion. Second. So we're taking the, the don't previous vote. motion to. I don't think we, at least the initial motion that, not, that you. Not, uh, not to, uh, to not allow. Correct, that was, a pr that was voted for the second motion that you started. Uh, mm -hmm. We haven't voted on it, so I don't, right. there wouldn't there be a no need seconds. to, no. yeah, there wouldn't be a need to withdraw that okay. since it wasn't, right. since there but wasn't the motion a second. motion is made now to rescind the previous motion. Uh, the motion uh, about not allowing correct not allowing the no, this motion would in effect put it back on the table okay to then I would say just instead of withdrawing the previous just restate the motion okay. that you're looking at bringing forth um, so I guess I'm moving to uh, uh, grant approval to allow demolition you're moving to allow demolition yes yeah. I will second that okay uh, all those in favor, aye. 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 All those no, no. <laughs> Motion passes. Okay. All right. And Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Got... All right. Next. Uh, uh, taking the patient off life support. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, let's see. Now we need to... Look at the item, uh, the item for um, Nick Buza, representing 13 Investments, <clears throat> for design review to reconstruct an existing parking lot located at 1043 Union. Uh, in other words, to replace the gravel with, um, I assume, tar. Uh, asphalt. asphalt. And I can give a quick overview in case there's any folks who would be watching this later. So as I mentioned during our on-site visit for uh, this request, this is pretty heavy on zoning code requirements. So the brunt of it is, as you can see, the building on the lot occupies roughly three quarters of the overall uh, lot area. The area on the far right being the only developable area to create a parking lot. Um, one of the challenges for the applicant in reconstructing the parking lot is meeting the current zoning code standards, specifically the 40 feet in width that's provided from the edge of the building to that eastern lot line. Now, meeting the uh, dimensional requirements for install or creating parking stalls, the aisle widths for the two-way traffic plus the five-yard setback, five-foot uh, setback that's required, there wouldn't be enough width to meet those standards. However, the zoning code does allow via 
a constrained site designation to amend some of these uh, standards, namely the width of the aisle, um, the dimensional of standards for the parking stalls. So, you know, upon review, I did uh, recommend approval of the constrained site designation. However, since this is located within the design review district, it does require this commission's approval. And as we mentioned on site, there's uh, three key points, three key review standards that this commission would have to take a look at for a parking lot reconstruction. First of all, what's the material that's going to be used? You know, essentially making sure uh, dirt, gravel, that's those types of materials is not a is not going to be used for a parking lot reconstruct. That you know, asphalt or concrete should be preferred which in this case asphalt is the recommended surfacing material. Uh, second of which is to provide landscaping as it applies as required by the zoning code. Now, the, as I mentioned, the applicant is looking to move the uh, dumpsters into the rear of the corner, upon which I would recommend that as a condition on this uh, design review to have either landscaping, fencing, or some sort of masonry enclosure around this around the trash and trash receptacles to better shield it from public view along center point. Uh, and then the third, what the design guidelines state is essentially where the parking lot should be located. Now, you know, good zoning practice, zoning code practice would be to have the parking lot in the rear or at least in the side of the lot, not visible from public view. Now in this case, given the size of the building, it's a lot abutting two street frontages. It's pretty difficult. But with that said, you know, having that setback along the street frontage plus on the side lot, you know, staff does feel that there would be at least some buffer um, from center point. So uh, staff would feel that that guideline would be met. And you know, I'd be happy to take any comments or questions that three of you have. I'll, I'll repeat what I said this morning. I I with an addition that Tim said, I, I think historically either gravel or dirt would be more authentic. <laughs> and and I, I, under, I understand the, mm -hmm. the new, but. And I will say just, again, I don't want to go too deep in the weeds here from a zoning standpoint, but there are more <laughs> a little bit more requirements that would be met for any parking lots that use gravel. Namely, you know, there's additional setback that's required. There is okay. edging that would be required. So, okay. um, you know, that would be one thing I would point out too. Okay. But, Joel? Okay. I would entertain a motion then to accept with, <clears throat> excuse me, with uh, staff's conditions here, uh, an asphalt driveway with the various zoning requirements. Uh, I will move that. Matter of fact, okay. Second, please. Second. Okay. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. Okay. Number oh, that's it. Yeah. Uh, I just need to entertain, uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. Yep. Uh, motion to adjourn, please. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor, aye. 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 Okay, we are adjourned. We are adjourned at 11.25. A video of this meeting is available for viewing on the city's website, stevenspoint.com slash videos.